Hey everybody. I know I say it in every video and I'm gonna say it again. It's been hot. It's been a long, hot day every inch of the way. But the good news is, is I've been inside most of the time. It's 8.30. The temperature is still mm, 83 degrees. Whew, humidity is 68%. Um, the last two days haven't been that bad. But I tell you, I got in my van a few days ago at nine o'clock in the morning and the thermometer says it was 107 degrees. And you know, I've been on some wicked oppressive hot days that I thought I was gonna start burning and it was only 101. So, you know, every thermometer I've looked at on the back porch and this guy here during the day, it's it's well into 100 degrees. It's, it's crazy, but enough about that. Uh, first things first, it's Christmas time. Got a few B36 pretty much exclusive items to the best of my knowledge. These are all for the, uh, well, for the flight engineer panel and the uh, pilot's console. First up is the uh, prop reversal button. That's the actual button used in the B36. It goes on that black area on the rear, up to the rear of that black area. So right over the uh, communications panel. This is, uh, this is made by Teleflex, and I actually need two of these. This guy goes right there where the uh, turbo supercharger lever goes, and the lever, you know, pivots in here, and of course, you know, comes out here, and, and I don't know if this is hydraulic or, I don't know what this thing does, but I know the one that is mounted to the immediate right, there is also the turbo supercharger selector or maybe that's the main rpm there's a lot of stuff going on but anyways there's one right there and it's linked either uh physically or pneumatically or hydraulically or however to the one up there and when you move this level the lever that lever moves so we'll figure that out but i'm just thrilled to have that to give my uh my lever some kind of a feel of the real thing but the next thing is, this is the made by Sperry Gyroscope. It's the cycle switch for the engine analyzer. The engine analyzer consisted of a big old dude that lived someplace under the flight engineer station. And there's two gauges over there, the holes for them. And of course the actual CRT analyzer right there. But this is one of the uh, boxes that mounts in that hole. Uh, I think this is for the the spark plugs maybe? But uh, if you were to move these gauges on that screen up there, you had a, you had a wave and that wave told you how your, uh, your piston engines were behaving. That's about all I know about that. But right here's the gold. This is the Holy Grail. Um, I never thought that I would ever own one of these. This is, I'd say probably the most difficult part to obtain to the B36. And this is the uh, this is the E6 autopilot remote control. And this literally a remote control, this is like for your older or your current TVs, um, you would have a wires and it goes to the main autopilot system that lived, there's a bunch of amplifiers that lived up under the, uh, the flight deck up there <clears throat> on top of the, uh, the wheel well. But this is the control for that and it lives and that space right there. So I've got pretty much everything I need to finish the back half of the console, excuse me, so I can get to work on that. So take your pictures, feast your eyes. Um, these things are pretty pricey, but I'm thrilled to have that. And I just need another one of these and she's gonna be pretty nice back there. I haven't posted a video in almost a week for a really good reason you're about to see. For all you people who like the, the jet console, I have been engineering my whatever off, trying to figure this stuff out. Now, I don't have any dimensions. I just know, you know, point A to point B. I know how big those are, where they need to be. Um, this shaft, I, 
<clears throat> it was, uh, I nailed it down to either one eighth of an inch or a quarter inch diameter. Uh, I want to be able to make stuff out of like the whole soles and whatnot you can buy at Lowe's and the pipe you can buy there. Cause I didn't want to have to stand at my lathe and I don't want to set up my lathe out in this heat and have to machine all this stuff. So I wanted to be able to buy a piece of pipe that I could just get a, a one eighth inch hole saw and, and make these and there you go. I uh, didn't quite go as planned. I had to actually shim this by about uh, one thirty second of an inch because there was just, there's too much play or there was too much play in these throttle levels, levers. I don't know why I do that, like Freudian slip. Every time I think lever, I say levels. But I've been killing myself trying to figure these out. Um, if you're a uh, B36 electrical throttle fuel control quadrant expert and I've done something wrong here, you know, call the cops. I'm still trying to figure it out. <clears throat> I've been, like I said, working on this for a week, you know, eight, 10 hours a day minimum. And I just realized that the potentiometers for number four and two are up oh, on the rear here where I thought that one and four were on the rear. So it it's either aft or rear and then forward, aft, forward is how they're mounted. I said, I don't have any dimensions. I have no idea how big this stuff is. I'm just scaling it off the pictures and it's, it's absolutely, come on now. It's absolutely marvelous because I didn't even take into consider the cover that goes over here. But when I put the cover on, it's, it's almost perfect. And there's a quarter of an inch of clearance, which is just enough back here for whenever these, these guys are back here, it clears the little panel light up here. So I know I'm on the right track. Um, of course you got your shaft and then you got your, uh, your lever assemblies. And these are your, these are your hubs. And in between each one of these, there's going to be uh, friction discs. This thing's, it's, it gets its pressure or its stiffness from friction plates. And it's like four here, four here, four here. And then there's doodads that triangulate up here and there's a bolt. So there's eight of those, two, four, six, eight, plus all the random discs. And then over here, you got this big lock nut looking thing, which I haven't figured out, but I'm pretty sure I will once I start building it. And there's an additional lever that sticks out to about here. And that's the, um, the throttle lock. And so I guess when you move it, it locks them all up. But uh, I haven't yet to figure that out. When it gets time to make the knobs, I'm gonna make a silicon mold and of a knob and simply pop that in there and let it harden and there we go. Try to get some nice, really hard resin for that. Uh, of course, on the back, there's two potentiometers here. In each the potentiometer has a gear and then it's got this thing called an index indexing plate. And that little plate is about three eighths. Well, I'm, I'm gonna make an amount out of quarter inch aluminum and it's shaped like a circle with a, a lip on it, with a triangulation. And it's got three surfaces in it for an indent that lives in the back. So when this thing moves, there's gonna be an indent here, here, and on the front. Because the throttle has three locking locations. It's got off, idle, and then 100% and a cutoff here. So, and on the bottom, which you can't see, and this isn't um, fastened in here, so I'm not going to move it. But under there, you can see where I've installed the cutoffs. There's going to be a little wing or a flange that comes off of each one of these. And there's a micro switch down there. So whenever these things opened up too much, it clicks it and cuts it off. But I still have to, a lot of guesswork here. I'm, I'm building these. Well, the first thing I built were, was the, um, the cutoffs. And then I built these and then I built all this and I'm going to duplicate this over here, but I can't duplicate this now because, well, because what actually holds those gears on, they're going to have two holes in them. So it's going to go that and then the indexing wheel. And then it's going to have a steel plate that's got 
a hole in it with the flat surface that, that won't allow it to spin. And then I have to extend these potentiometers by welding threads on them. And then there's gonna be a, um, a lock nut that goes on there and holds it all in there. So then when I move these, it'll move the yeah, potentiometers. And of course you're gonna have all these friction plates in here and everything should run smoothly. But uh, that's it. That's what I have been doing for the past week. Um, I built these initially out of 16 gauge steel, this part here, and I, it was too flimsy. So I cut this off and made this out of uh, 1 8 inch steel and then just doubled these up with two 16 inch plates. And I did that on all four. And believe it or not, these are actually handmade. I've hand cut those with my jigsaw or my, uh, my scroll saw. And so I've got one, two, well, that one down there. So I got two more of these to make, and that's all the gears I got to make for up here. I take that back. If I had this thing flipped over, there's some two additional gears for two of the throttles or some kind of a, a cutoff, but uh, one step at a time here. I got a lot of work to do. I'm, I don't have nearly as much as I did, but I still have a long way to go. The good news is, is what you see here is essentially what you will see on the flight engineer station. You got your six throttles and then to the right of it, you've got your six mixture controls. The mixture controls are identical to the jet throttles. So if I can build the jet throttles, I can build the six mixture controls. And of course the throttles are big pulleys that link via you know pulleys that go down here to these throttles. So I know I can build those because the gears aren't nearly as complicated as what you just saw. And I've, the engineering's out of the way. It's just a matter of copying it and pasting it and that's it. So whew, hopefully it won't be a hot summer and I won't die. If I do, I do. I'll see y'all next time.